everybody, it's Kristen. Thanks so much for watching this video. Chances are you've come here because you were searching for how to make an Outlander inspired cow and you've come to the right place because that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in the following minutes. This is it. Claire wears this in Star's original show Outlander. She wears it in the first couple of episodes, mainly episode two. So if you wanted to refer back to that to see which one I'm talking about, even though you probably already know, uh, you could definitely do that. And in the coming minutes, I'm going to show you a slide of a few different angles of the cow as worn on her, as worn by her, should we say. Uh, and you can see that this pretty much looks very close. So it's actually almost like a replica and not just inspired. Um, what makes this is really bulky yarn and large needles. These are size 50, looks like a little bit like a weapon, and you can use it as such. Just, you know, knit with one, keep one by your bed, you know. Looks a bit threatening like that. I'll put it down. But uh, I've got some pictures of that compiled together. Also, this has got a twist in it. There's a bit of debate over whether the one she wears has a twist or no twist, but without getting into that, you can put one in if you want, and I'll talk about that more a little bit later in the video after the demonstration. Um, it's simple to do the twist, it's just a matter of preference. And so, without further ado, I will get on to the demo. Okay, so here are several views of the cow as seen in the show, just so you can compare it to the one I was wearing before. We've got this one, and then of course this one, and then this one where she's wearing it in the, uh, um, oh, that, that wasn't supposed to, um, that, not the one that was. Okay, let's just move on. Okay, so to get the texture of this cowl that I just had on, which is right here, um, I'm holding two strands of super bulky yarn together as I knit. So you can see here there's two strands. And what this does is just, it's too thin on the size needle that we're using. Unless you hold two strands together, it really adds this nice touch and it makes the garter look really unique and very, very chunky and fluffy and soft, which is exactly how the cowl on the show looks. So right here I have Lion Brand, I think this is either Thick and Quick Super Bulky or Hometown USA, it's one of the two, but here I've got two strands and I'm holding them together, and I'm using size 50 needles, yes, yes, you'll have to sit there a minute and let your eyes go back in your head, but you can see here that these are giant US 25 millimeter, but they are worth it and the, it's necessary to the end result to use big needles, even though they are like using broom handles at first. So here we go. Let's get into this. I'm going to start casting on, but what I want to do is connect my two strands together. So I need to at least tie a little bit of a knot here, and we have started our first stitch. It's going to go on our needle. And so now I'm just going to use the cast on method that I use in my first cast on video, which is the easiest and I'm going to cast on about mm, 16 stitches. You don't want to cast on any more than about 18. You can do anywhere from 14 to 18, but depending on how much you want it to cover your shoulders and how high on your neck you want it to come up. So because I've been talking on and on, I've forgotten how many I've put on here. We've got five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so here we've got 16 stitches, two strands held together, and please ignore me when I'm reaching for my yarn. I've got my two different balls in different places, so if I kind of have to yank them to get them to come together, I'm sorry about that. So basically all we're going to do is work this in just knit stitches on the right and wrong side. And basically, as I said before, we're just creating the garter stitch, but it looks so different and it looks so much nicer because it's on a grand scale, I like to call it. The needles are grand. The yarn is grand, and by grand, I mean humongous. So, uh, here we go. Just gonna open this up so I can get the needle in. Okay, and that's about to creep off. I can see what it's trying to do. It's trying to leave. And the first row is always the hardest. With, I think, any project, it's always the most difficult. But when you add these needles that are already kind of a little bit, I don't know, tricky, doesn't seem like the right word, but they're already a little bit hard to get around and get used to, that first row is kind of 
taken to the next level. Especially because these bamboo needles are highly, highly polished and so they can be kind of slippery. So I'm going to just knit to the end of this row and then I'm going to get back to you. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of the row here and it's normal for this last stitch to be kind of loose. It's just the nature of the bulky yarn and the size of the needles. So I'm going to just turn this around and again we're going to do knit stitches. Same thing. And something that helps me um, as you go in this project, go from row to row, is to push your stitch upward with your left hand and your thumb more specifically so that you can see the opening here before you make the actual stitch, knit stitch. And th what this does is it not only helps you see where the needle has to go and direct it because the needles are so large and sometimes they're slippery and hard to fit through the stitch, pushing it upward helps give you kind of the space that you need. And in addition to doing that, it helps you separate your groups of two because if you kind of don't do that, there's a, more of a chance that you could end up knitting three or more together, which is... You know, that could work too. It's not exactly what we're trying to do, but you would definitely get some an interesting look there too. So I'm going to finish a couple more rows and then show you how it should be looking by then. Okay, so after a few more rows, about five rows, this is what we've got. Um, very stretchy, very nice, and it works up really fast. You can get this done in a matter of minutes. By minutes, I mean about 30 minutes to an hour. Um, but they go along pretty fast, so this is what you've got. Now, you want to keep on working this over and over again, the same stitch, until you get to about 27 to 31 inches in length. And after it's that long, you can then cut your yarn and bind off. But before you cut your yarn, <laughs> before you cut your yarn, you really need to measure it by holding your yarn on the end of your across your work so it needs to be able to cover the whole width of your work plus about five or ten inches so you've got to have enough when you sew it together so it needs to fit across there and about another five to ten inches and then you can cut it off and start to sew it together but um, it's crucial that you, you leave enough of a tail because when you're weaving and then you realize you don't have enough, it's just like a moment. So hopefully we'll avoid that. Um, after you do that, now before you do that, like I said, with the twist, you can either, if your project is laid flat, you can either just twist it once, just the one side of it, just make, create one twist, like a, just a basic infinity, and then bring the two corners together and sew them. Or you can have it out flat and just bring the two corners together without any kind of twist to it. It's all up to you. Um, and I am thinking about making a video of how to sew it together the ends. If that would be helpful to you, just let me know down below if you really need to see that. It's basically, all you need is a tapestry needle and then the tail that you've left. And you weave it in with this back and forth through the two ends holding them together. And without rambling on and on about it, there are videos, um, blog posts, short videos showing it, probably shorter than I can do as long as I'm talking right now. But needless to say, if you do need a video on that, let me know and I will do my best. So basically, you can, if you wanted to go on longer than 27 to 31 inches for a longer length and wrap it around your neck, two or three times you could do that but you would probably want to do a lesser cast on number if you were going to do that because with it being bulky and you're wrapping it around I mean I would be surprised if you were ever able to move your neck again but it's all up to you it's very versatile you can customize it how many when you want to cast on how long you want to go what color you want to use and you can make a ton of these and like I said in under an hour so great for gifts and everything else like that uh, if you have any other questions, please please let me know. Don't hesitate. And just general feedback, I would love to hear it down below. Thanks so much.